here I have a special guest again, Mr. John Sinclair. Thank you for joining me. It's an honor. Yeah. He's an expert in 3D. And yeah, just maybe introduce yourself to the audio, please. Yeah, well, I'm John Sinclair. I'm from Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. And that's where I have my shop, Sinclair Golf Training Center. And we've been doing 3D now since 2006, I think. Mm. And uh, probably as long or longer than most anybody. Mm. So I have lots of tour players. I might have the best database in the world as far as tour players mm. go. Mm. Um, at least one of the top ones. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've read that you were like one of the first to be in this 3D section and, and to really do a lot of research about it. So could you just maybe introduce a bit this, this 3D topic? Well, the 3D, I got involved in that simply because of uh, the 2D world was, it wasn't the way I was seeing things. So I originally started coaching and teaching by eye thinking, well, I don't need any help. And then I was introduced to videos and I started to question what I was teaching due to the videos. Mm. And then I was introduced to a, a gentleman named Dr. Rob Neal mm. and he showed me for the first 3D part. And then I was like, whoa, that's what I see. Mm. So I'd spent time in the 2D world questioning what I saw, but mm. we teach in a 3D world. Mm. And so I was being deceived by the two dimensions. And so then I went into three dimensions mm. with, uh, ended up going with the AMM system with Dr. Phil Cheatham. Mm. And that's where I started on his beta system and started collecting all kinds of players, amateurs, and mostly tour players. The way I was involved with it, it just seemed like the tour players, that's mm. where I started. Mm. So that's pretty much how it went. And I started to see the swing, the way I was teaching it in that space, in the 3D world. And I started to then go back and relook at 2D, and I see that way different now. Mm. Mm. So I can, already can hear a bit that 3D has really changed your perspective on how you coach. So, but can you please a bit maybe explain the main difference between 2D and 3D coaching, especially when you look at tour players? Yeah, well, it's any player. Yeah. It's not just a tour player, any player. When you're using two dimensions, a lot of people don't understand that it's, it's a little bit deceiving on the position that it might be. So if you could walk around a player, and that's what I would actually do, I would stare at 3D uh, captures, and then I would walk around and look around. I was like, that's the way you see it in real life. And a two-dimensional camera, you know, depending on, I'll just do it in front of that camera, depending on your angle, square can all of a sudden look closed or open. Mm. So I'm sure when you see that, you'll see all of a sudden this handle appear and then this handle appear and it looks like I'm doing this when I'm actually just holding a straight line back and forth. And so depending on your camera angle, if, if you're not familiar and of course, when we're coaching, we get parents sending us videos of their children. They're out of the trees and you know down yeah, low. Or they're sitting on a bag from a yeah. player. And you're getting all these different perspectives. And it's, it's amazing how different it will look. Mm. In fact, I was at a coaching center. And I gave several coaches a, uh, uh, two videos of my swing. Mm. And I put in every single thing you can imagine that would give them the hint that that was the same swing. I even had a clock with a second hand mm. and it was showing the same time. Mm. And I had the cameras placed behind them one foot apart like this. So it was mm. like, that's all, that's all one foot up and one foot across. And when I came back, a hundred percent of those instructors gave two different lessons for the same swing. Mm. And so this much difference in the camera angle and a little of just a little trickery on my part. Mm. I can mm. certainly say that, but they were given two different lessons. So I started to see, we need to show people 3D mm. because that could happen on a daily basis. Or let's just say somebody that's starting out at a club that's inexperienced and hasn't been trained on how to see the cameras properly could, you know, damage not only his reputation, but maybe mm. the golf player is not getting the proper instruction. Mm. This is very interesting. Uh, so I can already hear how the 3D has really helped you improve and also help you improve teaching. Mm -hmm. um, but what I want to know is how a amateur player can 
all this knowledge what you, what you can get out of 3D capture used for his daily training and to get better? Well, 3D, you can use it in several different ways. I mean, some phases we can use biofeedback, which, you know, here with Fendris, we've learned as of today that we'll probably have some similar coming down the line for mm -hmm. some biofeedback, which is very helpful to hear tones and get people to feel positions. Mm -hmm. And it's much more helpful to feel a position dynamically mm -hmm. when you're actually moving than it is statically. So we see a lot of training where you're holding these static positions, but rarely have I seen you be able to really recreate what happens dynamically in that motion. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you don't realize that you have a motion, mm -hmm. and so you go to this position, but there's a force that happened before that position to get you there, and mm -hmm. so you're not feeling that. That's why people feel different and they're real is because they're feeling the force, but then the motion is happening later. Mm -hmm. And so those, those 3D components of visualization in reality where you can spin them around and look at different positions from a mm. different point of view, uh, biofeedback, and then the actual real data of the numbers that you get from all these positional and how that player is moving. You just can't get that in mm. two dimensions. You just can't. So feel versus real is getting much more closer for the player to actually not only see and then try to feel it, but it's like because of the biofeedback, as you just mentioned, can get very close and therefore very effective in training. Right. At, at least, even though their feel still might not be real, they have a, a feel for a position, even though it may be different, they start to recognize it much quicker mm. when you're giving biofeedback or even just showing them a 3D picture of what they were doing. Mm. And mm. so that really helps, you know, progress the, the learning curve. And then we can also, with the 3D, is monitor their progress. So certainly with, you know, the AMM system with that known to use forever, mm. it takes a lot of wires. we got to wire them up. It's not the greatest for the player. And so the players don't like it. Mm. I had one tour player tell me that uh, it was probably in our seventh year. He, oh. he told me that uh, I really used to look forward to you coming to see me, and now I just hate it. You know, he's got to get in all the wires, he's got to get on those things. And then with the Fender app, it's why I'm so interested, is because it gets rid of the wires. Mm. And we do know the wires do cause some conflict in the swing. Mm. And so it's not perfect, but having a uh, an app on your phone, which is ridiculous, and, mm. and to be able to get very similar things, it's game-changing because now they're free to move and they don't feel like they're encumbered. You know, even though the wires aren't restricting they're mentally restricted definitely definitely um, <clears throat> out of experience i've done quite a lot of 3d uh, captures with as you mentioned rob neal mm -hmm. and i can say that i have always felt very restricted i've always thought like i cannot do my full rotation my arm feels weird because there's a cable here so you know, we're always afraid to maybe break the cables yeah. like this. Mm -hmm. and then Obviously, when this, this Fenris idea came, I was very excited to learn that I can do this whole capture because I'm a data nerd and to see this whole, all the numbers. And he is a data nerd. I, <laughs> I've known him now for, for a week and he's definitely a data nerd. And to see all those numbers now and it just from going into this bay and just hitting and then being able to have 10 minutes later with the, or even one minute later with the mobile uh, to have all the data accessible, that is unreal. Yeah, so, um, and we'll think about the other application of being able to take it out on the course. Yes. You know, you can go shoot anywhere. Mm. Now, we've done past with the wires and dragging around the course into different mm. greens and hitting different shots, and it's insane, difficult. Definitely. And to capture just a few swings, it takes an entire half a day. Yeah. You know, moving around the course. And with this, it's you can just go anywhere you want, put it anywhere you want, and as long as the setup is good, you're good to mm. go. Yeah. And Mostly of the what you actually do is the cal uh, the the um, calibration, uh, right. which always yeah. took uh, ages. But now it's fantastic to see that there's an app which doesn't even need calibration to get the same data. Right. Um, but what I'm interested in is in how would you now apply for an amateur golfer to use this app? How can he apply maybe a bit of 3D knowledge to gain uh, in his to, or to get better in his game? Well, and if you think of it from a coach's perspective, when I have an amateur, 
I don't get to see them that often. Like they may come once a month, you know, sometimes we don't see them for, you know, six months, mm -hmm. but with the Fenders Motion to Coach app, we can now, they can, as soon as they download the data on the driving range into their phones, it hits your phone. Mm -hmm. So I've been in airports across the country and, and been sitting there working with my players that are on the range. So they get more benefit and access to their coaches, mm -hmm. which helps them. And then we're getting real feedback. Mm -hmm. And one of my really good amateurs just told me the other day was in the airport, I got more out of this than any range session mm -hmm. that I've ever had. So as the chat comes mm -hmm. in the Fender Chef, we won't even have to use the text part. We can mm -hmm. just do it right through the app. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be a game changer as well. Mm -hmm. But they, and, it, and then an amateur on their own, using the app, starting to get familiar with the numbers, it might be intimidating at first, mm -hmm. but they get used to the numbers and then the 240 frames, real frames that we can get in the video, mm -hmm. um, I think is, is very, very important because they can see it so much clearer. Mm -hmm. So even if they're familiar with 2D, we're going to get a lot out of the Motion to Coach app mm -hmm. because it's better than the iPhone because we changed the iPhone's camera up to 8,000 frames, the shaft is crystal clear, you know, and the 240 frames is, that's worth everything. Mm. And so they can use it for that. The new stuff we're working on this week with tracers and stuff like that on the body, seeing more visualization, because, mm. you know, key to a lot of improvement in golf is visualizing what they're doing instead of having words in their head and mechanics in their head mm. and even numbers like, ooh, I gotta mm. be this. When you free somebody up to visualize what they need to do, it's amazing. Mm. You know, there's a there's a video out. Google it. It's a little kid with a baseball bat. Obviously, his dad's a coacher. I don't know anything about the kid. He's in diapers. There's no way he can speak. Mm. And he had this bat and a tee ball. And he had this perfect form, stepped up, leaned into it, and smoked that ball. And, I mean, there's no way this kid can talk. He's mm. that small. He's, like, this big. And... I thought to myself, nobody taught him that. He watched it. Mm -hmm. So he was either watching his dad coach, watching baseball on TV, and he had this perfect form. And heck, he had to be 18 months old. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. And, and I always try to tell people, and I save the video on my phone to show people, we need to learn like this. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the way we need to learn. Yeah, I think visual, uh, visualization is, is quite an important part in what we do here. Mm -hmm. um, I think when we started, the main mission was to really simplify the data, because before when when I started um, with with three D motion capture with Rob or, or or else, I always felt like it's rocket science. You had like this very not appealing screen, and then you had data here, data there. It was all just crowded, and you got a report, and so like you had millions of colors: red, green, yellow, everything, and you thought like. I have no idea what it is. With the now the motion to coach, I feel that it's much more simplified, and also just more see through for the player to understand what is actually happening. Uh, I, I I'm not like I, I do not have to see a coach every time. I just no. have recorded something, but I can more certainly send a coach my my data to get feedback. Mm -hmm. But I think that will improve practice for a lot of amateur golfers or also professional golfers because they get more data, more feedback, and understand what is actually happening with their swing sure even feeling you know watching the hand path tracer on the stick figure mm. they can try something feel something record it see what it looks like try mm. something new see what changed see mm. how the ball flight changed so they can just get out there and have actual fun and at the same time have some improvement mm. well this didn't work so i know that this look of the trace no numbers mm. just the trace this didn't work so i need to look like this when it does work and mm. it, you can have self-discovery much easier than going well it was you know one mile an hour into out and down and all these numbers so i think that's a huge advantage of the way that i see the motion to coach app progressing mm -hmm. and and i know I've, I've talked to dirk about the more we can have visual keys versus mechanical keys is the better it's mm -hmm. just the better way to go mm -hmm. it could be just very simple for somebody to use and get mm -hmm. better even if they didn't have a coach mm -hmm. what's the first thing you, you look at or the first things you look at when there's an amateur player coming in and what are like <clears throat> the, the main struggles they face which they could uh, improve 
with using the motion to project? Well, the, fir the way I would say as an amateur coming into it, what we are so used to is amateurs coming to see us as coaches that have been spent hours on YouTube. Mm. And they have this idea that if you look this way, like they'll pick out their favorite player, that they their body style is not even the same. Mm. If you look this way, then you'll become a better ball striker or whatever. And we've, we've certainly learned in 3D that that's not true. Mm. It's being able to repeat you know, a functional swing for a person mm -hmm. instead of trying to model after some famous tour player swing that, you know, you don't, you're not in the gym working out every week, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you're sitting in an office, you have to do a job and then you're out there practicing a couple times a week and getting to play, mm -hmm. you know, maybe once a week or less, then you need to learn what's functional for you mm -hmm. and, and, and quit trying to look, I call it pretty mm -hmm. and start learning what functional is. Mm -hmm. And that obviously could take some help from a coach. Mm -hmm. um, I had a coach today, Steve, we talked about one of his players on what, what he thinks we should do. And mm -hmm. it's a very good player. And looked at her and I'm like, well, we got two choices. I mean, she can change some physical things. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, she's already swinging almost 100 miles an hour. And for a lady, that's really fast. Why wouldn't we just, you know, she's hitting toe strikes. Why wouldn't we just adjust where she's setting up to the ball? Mm -hmm. And she's repeating this motion like gold. Oh, why would you go in and change that? Mm -hmm. And even though, so she had a little early extension or something like that, probably getting some speed from that anyway. Mm -hmm. So why try to change it? That's the whole key for me is if I'm going to change something for a player, I should have a reason for it. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, if I change this, we should get better, not look better, but get better. Mm. And I think that's missed a lot, especially in the amateurs, because they want to look like their favorite pros. Mm. And if they ever came and saw my 3D database of all the pros, everyone I'd pick up, pick up through there pretty much looks different. Mm. <laughs> and you wouldn't know who they were, but they make millions of dollars doing a lot of the same things that an amateur does, mm. you know, faults in the swing. Mm. but yet they repeat it and they understand it and they control it. Mm. And the consistency by far to a swing is having consistent thoughts. Mm. If we're out there, and this will be another good reason for motion to coach, if we're out there changing our thoughts from swing to swing, I'm gonna try this and try that, we get in this loop that's just not going anywhere. Mm. We start out in our practice hitting the ball good and we end up always hitting it bad because mm. we've changed something by the end instead of with the motion of coach you can see where you were at when you hit it good and then some of the new features hopefully eventually what we're talking about is then keeping you in those numbers so you can eventually say oh i today I, i'm doing a little something different and mm. when i was hitting it good i was doing this you can put yourself back you don't need a coach for that mm. You know, so there's another good reason for an amateur to have it and learn what they do well mm. versus trying to look like something. Because mm. I've told all the my amateurs, I mean, you find me a swing fault you don't like, and I will find you a tour player that makes millions of dollars that has that fault. Mm. And why can't you? You know, maybe we don't like it, you know, and that's... 100% viable too. I certainly have clients that say, well, I don't care. I don't like the way I look. I want to look like this. And we go, okay, well, that's a different goal mm. than playing well. Mm. You know, recently I had a, a, a client, I've, I've taught him for the last year and he just wants to look good. And I said, well, as long as you never come to me and talk to me about score, mm. then if that's your goal to look a certain way hitting a ball, that's fine. I mean, that's if that's what you're getting fun out of, why not? Mm. And then he just signed up for the next year and he says, well, I want to score now. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, you look pretty, right? Yeah. Okay, now you want to score. And I'm like, okay, then we're not hitting irons anymore just every mm. single time you walk in here so that we get this certain look. We're going to start working inside of 100 yards. We're going to start working on your putting. And now we're talking about score. That's a whole mm. different goal. Both are fine for amateurs, right? Whatever you want is fine. They're supposed to have fun. So if score is your, your driving factor, we got to attack the things that will help you shoot lower. Mm -hmm. And unbeknownst to most amateurs, that is 100 yards and in. Mm -hmm. And it's not their driver. 
most of the time. You know, you can have a bunch of penalties and break 80 mm. with your driver, right? So it's just defining goals. And I think with motion to coach, it would also allow a player to define their goals and actually choose to, what do I want to get better at? Do I want to get better at looking good? Fine, mm. do that. Do I want to get better at scoring? Fine, we can do that. There's two different approaches and you can use the app for both. Mm. I think it's it pretty good, sums it up pretty versus effective. Mm -hmm. It's just <clears throat> what a player is, what his goal is. Right. And then um, you and motion to coach are obviously then able to help him achieve his goals if he wants to. Mm -hmm. um, but what I now wonder, how has the 3D sector and this 3D measurement evolved throughout the time you've been using it? And are there a few things you st are still looking for? Or are there a few things you would say, okay, those have improved so massively, I'm so grateful for it? Well, certainly 3D has been slow to evolve. Mm. You know, I've been, you know, searching for, obviously since I've used the wires, I've been searching for wireless since day one. Mm. And that just hasn't evolved as fast as what we want. Um, I've, I've done optical and the optical was good. It was much more free. Um, but with, you know, the sensors were even more likely to move in the full body motion. And so that started to present a problem for me and I didn't really like that. That's what I was, I was wanting from it is the freedom. And then now motion coaches showed me the AI and, and the AI is truly where it's advancing. Mm -hmm. So to be able to take a phone and get three dimensional accurate data, is, that's a game changer. And that's ridiculous mm. <laughs> when you think about it. I personally didn't think it was possible. I mean, because I'm, I'm coming from the world of, well, you got to have so many cameras catch the mm. marker or you have to have a global system that, you know, the electromagnetic system, which tracks it fine. But we still have wires. We have balls stuck on you. And now you go to research labs, you know, you have to strip down in a, in a skivvies, right? Mm. And uh, you're sitting there naked hitting balls. That's, you know, only only the best looking people can really be free mm. to, to do that. So those are the kinds of things we're looking for as coaches to evolve something that you can come in, you pick up your phone, you do that. And then we go into the studio version. We'll have multiple cameras. Um, the accuracy level will certainly even go up from there with that. Mm. And, you know, the phone, that we have right now, eventually we'll have some 300 parameters on it. Mm. And then the you know, studio version is somewhere around 400. Mm. You know, on, on my system now, I'm getting like 200, 220. I mean, we could go up from there. I mean, you get in the system and add more. Mm. Um, but that that's a huge difference. And we don't have to wire no setup time for the most part other than just making sure your camera's right and, and go. So there's the evolution. And the AI has now made that possible mm. where nobody conceived of it being possible before. Certainly I couldn't, mm. but y'all proved it to me, mm. right? And we're still working and there's still a lot of evolution in that to come to make mm. it, you know, up to a research standard, but certainly a coaching standard, it's already there. My players are already getting great help mm. from the information we can get on what we've only scratched the surface on. Mm you know, of what we see coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? it's very interesting. Um, I was I was just about to ask and if you have any player references yet where you've said, okay, you have positive feedback, I'm really using it. Because I think the most important part to, to really think about is the accessibility. Like before um, there was, before we had the app, uh, I was not fortunate enough to have a 3D system from whatever brand laying around here because they were up to 20, plus grand yes. and now considering that the app is for coaches uh, selling at 13, 12 euros a month, um, that is a, main, a, a huge difference. Well, I, my AMM system was 27, somewhere in there, thousand dollars. I mean, there was, and to be honest, back then there was only so many idiots like mm. myself that are willing to do that and then learn and it, that system's for research and it's complicated to learn with mm. all the different graphs and stuff like that but and that gets frustrating mm. you know and then here's motion to coach for I guess the most expensive if you would pay $15 a month mm. you know <laughs> or you yeah, pay you for a year yeah if you do it by the month and that's a re 
ridiculous difference for a, what will in turn be a lot of the same data and certainly the value versus help to that is going to far outweigh anything I've ever done with it. You know, I've got a 40 grand optical system and then I've got a, this one and, and this has already proven that now there's a return on investment. You know, people think, oh, you know, what's your return on your investment for all this technology that I've bought over the years? And I always just go, I never even wanted to know because there's, I just don't, mm. probably didn't get that. Mm. I don't even want to know if I didn't. Mm. But what it did increase my knowledge for sure and made me a better coach. So I don't even know if you could calculate that. But certainly a, a up and coming, let's just say, you know, you decide you want to become a coach someday mm. and you want to start teaching you can go out there with this app and mm. and and if you if you've gone around and learned from the different people in the three-dimensional space and you have some knowledge it's fifteen dollars a month maximum mm. and you can really help people mm. you don't have to go spend thirty thousand forty thousand dollars on a system when you can help players achieve their goals just as easy with your phone mm. It's crazy. It's just one less a month, and you have a already uh, you know, return. Right. So. Exactly. You made money the first yeah. day, so, uh, and, and then you've also, when you get the player to download and, mm. and download on the striker version, and they're giving you their data when you're not there. Mm. That's adding a value to the player Definitely. because they're getting better. They're getting some information outside their lessons. You can stay in contact with them. Mm. And so there's an, another invaluable uh, asset for the player. Mm. Definitely, because your AMM system is mostly, if you take it with you, uh, just with you and just with you alone. So uh, players all over the world uh, will not be able to access it at any time. And, now this, and, and this we would only function. put them in there once a year. Yeah. Remember, I told you that they didn't like it. Yeah. You know, a lot of, there's very few players at a professional level that like getting wired up. I mean, I don't know how many times I've like, maybe I can count two mm. in my life that I said, man, I really love doing this. Mm. Most of them don't like it, but I don't have any problems snapping that phone. They all are used to you taking mm. pictures in your camera. I don't get any complaints from that. Mm. <laughs> you know? But I say, hey, I need you to come in and we mm. do our, and, and I, unless there's a medical problem, I would never do it more than once a year or some drastic swing problem that somebody's mm. having and, you know, coach would bring them in or something like that. But it wouldn't do it much more, mm. you know, because it's just too encompassing. And then I've traveled all over the world with this system. Mm. And every time I'm afraid to death that it's not going to get there. Yeah. My phone <laughs> has always got there. You know, I've never had to wait on the next plane or something with my luggage yeah. with this. And and that's been like, you talk about, you know, because you couldn't insure it Definitely. enough. You, you couldn't afford it, right? So mm. each time is a risk. Mm. So maybe now after all these years, I've if I lose it, then okay, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. I can still remember um, when I started off with this 3D motion capture, I was left alone when uh, all of this building was still up there. And um, they left me alone, and I couldn't reach my water bottle because I was <laughs> wide in, and I was that's too yes, afraid to move too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. And because I was working on biofeedback, so I tried to get to my drink even with my club, but I couldn't reach it. So I was left alone there practicing for about four hours without drinking, without food. So yeah. now that is not a problem anymore because no. we don't use wires. You can just leave the yeah. bay whatever whenever you want and enter it and just hit again. You don't need to calibrate. You can go to the toilet. It's what it, from what I have already experienced a huge benefit. Sure, and then you know it's 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 it, that's the game changing part, mm. and that's what I've been searching for now for however many years that is mm. seventeen years of of three D access is mm. the freeing thing that you can go and come and feel free to swing and jump around. I mean, we're working now with all the long drive guys, mm. and every time I've captured a long drive guy in a wires, it's weird yes <laughs> right I, I cannot imagine martin in in a wired setup i've never the... asked martin because i know he just he'd go ballistic but i've yes. had some other ones that are a little more you know subdued in there and mm. it's still crazy because it, it doesn't even it doesn't even capture it right because all that movement it is hard mm. to keep those things still definitely, definitely. 
and and this is this is definitely uh, something that will progress them mm. because they're free to jump around and do the things that they do, and it's been a it's been a, that's been an eye opening experience for me mm-hmm. too because that's a whole different world. I come from competitive golf, and now I'm starting to dabble in competitive, you know, killing the ball, mm. <laughs> and it's it's two different things, mm. and I, I'm finding less and less similarities mm. in a swing. I kind of say it this way: I have a swing that I got to hit one in the grid, mm. and then I got a swing that I got to hit. I got to find all of them. Mm. Right, so if I'm a tour player, I need to find all of my shots, and if mm-hmm. I want to hit it as far as I can, I really just need to find one out of six and just make sure I hit it well. Mm-hmm. Now, there's advantages to hitting all six in the grid, but you know that's where this comes into play. But those are really separate types of swings. Definitely, yeah. I can still recall when I was because I started off quite young with 3D motion capture, and was like <coughs> very very small, and the system I've been working with was made for bigger people mm-hmm. so he had to strap again like we had here like straps here and he had to pull it so tight that after the session it was like a one hour session i could i was still feeling like i had these strap on because it was made it pulled so tight that i had like a complete mm-hmm. i was i was wet here everywhere it's it's just a few it's, a, it's not only a few things it's a, a, a huge amount of things which have improved with now our wireless uh, motion tracking and what I'm very curious is that the what we are doing is completely adaptable for every kind of sport. Now we yes. have started with tennis, we have started with volleyball. Uh, that is, if you one think of my about friends it, is into baseball, and I know yeah. he's been talking to you. Yeah. yeah. If you think about it, just imagine a tennis player in a wire three D. But we've done picture. it. Yeah, yeah uh, we've done it, it. It has been done, but I can't imagine. Uh, the pain he has been suffering when doing a three D motion capture wire. So. Um, it's just the the whole topic is getting more and more interesting with if we see the abilities we are able to capture so i'm just very excited for the future what what is going to happen with this wireless tracking well certainly from a 3d perspective for a coach i'm off the roof excited mm. about it and i'm probably the biggest skeptic mm. about this whole thing anybody that knows me knows me that i'm going to go into it and i'm going to pick apart every little detail mm. and complain and it's, if it's yeah, not it. yeah it's <laughs> not yeah you've already heard yes, it right by, by the king is like when when he started working on him he was like we were both sweating bullets he said johnny he's not he's not a, he's not going to sweet talk me so he's going <laughs> to give me the real deal that's and, right and, uh, and and what's so awesome is they 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 understand that mm. your dad understands that you know mm. this is what i need you know, I can't go to somebody with something that's not right. Mm. Now, every system is going to have error. Mm. I don't know that you can make one that's error free. But if the errors are identifiable, mm. then we can live with it. As a coach, as a player, we just need to know about it. Mm. You know, what are the limitations and what are the, uh, you know, where are the values of each system? As long as we know that, we can. And so, uh, someone like your father. You know, Dirk, listening to us, saying, hey, this is what we need. This is what it is. And sometimes it's not the answer that everybody would like to hear. It's not mm-hmm. all, you know, you know, candy canes and, mm-hmm. and all that. Sometimes you just got to say it. And, and that's the most refreshing thing with working with them is, is you're not trying to do anything but make it better every single mm-hmm. day. And that's all we can ask for is, is people using the system and, and learning from it and, mm-hmm. and having it evolve into something really special, which it will. I'm, I'll say it this way. Every single thing I've doubted at this point, this company and these people have proved to me they could do what they said. That's nice to you. So, yeah, I can think, like I, like I like to phrase it, so success is not granted. You have to work for it. Mm-hmm. And we obviously hope to be successful with the product, but there is no definitely option. So for us, it's just a static process of trying to evolve, 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 get better. Uh, I mean, if we, if we just have a look at the people we now have reached, for example, you, um, to get you to work on the product is amazing for us. Um, because the, the amount you have helped the product, the input you have gave is, is quite fascinating. So I think also for all the coaches and players out there, it's interesting to see uh, a coach like you saying that the benefit or 
the doubt you had because I assume that there are a lot of coaches where they also have a doubt who are maybe sh already in the 3D industry and say yeah, it's not possible if I don't have markers cannot record anything um, mm -hmm. to, to see okay I was one yeah <laughs> to see okay <laughs> yeah. that is actually possible right and, and people also know that they know that when they call me I'm gonna tell them the truth mm -hmm. you know I'm, I'm gonna tell them this is what I'm doing this is what it's doing this is where it's good and and this is where we're working on to make it better. I mean, at mm -hmm. least they know with the honesty that it's coming from me that, that I'm not fibbing, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to get them to buy something. I'm just going to tell them. And I wouldn't be sitting here if I didn't believe in the direction it was going. And I've worked with plenty of companies. And mm -hmm. A lot of those companies, you would, they would say the same thing. So um, we've done a lot of that in the 3D space. Mm -hmm. And it's hopefully it's always pushed it forward. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm after is pushing it forward. And markerless is by far the way that it needs to go, has to go, really. Mm. Thank you for your time. It was great to talk to you. Um, yeah, really thanks for having me. Yes, thank you. I hope for you it was quite nice to see an insight to hear John talk about the product. And stay tuned for the next episode. Bye bye.